And now, here on AMTV, the next part of our Doctor Who Steelbook Collection. <laughs> Hey there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another installment of my Doctor Who Steelbook Collection. And this time we are taking a look at the Stephen Moffat era, or what has been released of it so far anyway. Now I'm going to make this clear, the lighting in this video might be a bit all over the place because this pesky series, Series 7, arrived today. I'm actually recording this probably about an hour before I'm going to attempt to post it to YouTube, so it's all a bit of a rush. And I had to record the other steelbooks earlier in the day just to save myself some time. So if the lighting jumps about or quality of the sound or anything, that is why. But we have four steelbooks to look at today, looking at Series 5, Series 6, Series 7, and Series 10. Why the gap? Well, all will be revealed as we go along. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so first up we have Doctor Who, the complete fifth season, which is the first season to star Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor and Karen Gillan as Amy Pond, as you can see on the front. Now, this season is quite revered amongst fandom. A lot of people cite it as the best of the modern Who era. I've got to be honest, I've always found this season a little bit, if not a lot, overrated. There's some cracking stories, don't get me wrong, but me, myself, I've never personally found this a favourite. And I could say that really for the whole Matt Smith era in general, but hey, I'll delve into that in depth another time. That's a topic for another video. But look at this steelbook. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. You've got the uh, painting, like the cracked thing of the TARDIS exploding with our two central characters in the fray. The Sonic is looking glorious, glowing its bright green. And this artwork was done by Sophie Cowdery, who's a very, very talented artist. I highly recommend you go and follow her on Twitter and Instagram. Check out her work. You can buy a lot of her work on her Etsy page and her Redbubble page. And as we're approaching Christmas, come on. A lot of us Whovians need a good art print for Christmas. So go and check out Sophie's stuff. She's done an absolutely phenomenal job, as she has done with this. It looks amazing. And if we skim on over to the back, we will see just exactly what is on here. As always with these sets, you've got some gorgeous artwork on the back that sums up the season. So you've got Weeping Angels, Silurians, River Song, a young Amy Pond, Rory, the Daleks, both the old kind and the paradigm. <laughs> the, the paradigm. And just below the paradigm, which you'll see as I pan down a bit later, you will see the crack, the famed crack in time that would sort of dominate in many ways the Matt Smith era, for better or worse. So, episode starring Matt Smith and Karen Gillan, you have the 11th hour, the intro episode, often seen as, again, one of the greatest episodes in Modern Who. It's certainly a very uh, strong story to introduce a Doctor, I'll give it that, but I really don't think it's much more than that. The Beast Below, Episode 2, a really strong second part, I'd think, actually. A lot of people at the time, I remember, discounted it. I think it's a lot of fun. Victory of the Daleks, of course, introduces these boys here as the new paradigm. And I remember at the time, yes, some of the colours maybe are a bit too bright and play school for the Daleks. But in terms of the episode, I love the interactions with Churchill. You know, obviously the Doctor has a history, but it was nice to see him played by Ian McNeese. You had some great uh, chemistry between the leads here. Matt Smith did a phenomenal job in his third episode. It was the closest it came in this season for me to saying he is the Doctor, but I actually said that a lot later down the line, but we'll get to that. You have the first two-parter being the Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone with the Weeping Angels. And yes, it's a very uh, interesting episode. Admittedly, I haven't watched it in quite a long time. I do need to give it a rewatch. But I, I think for me, uh, the Weeping Angels created such a strong presence in Blink in David Tennant's time that this began the trend of reusing them a lot. So I, I, but I do need to give it a rewatch. You have the Vampires of Venice, which I always thought was a bit middling. Uh, Amy's Choice, really cool concept. Uh, to Toby Jones is the Dream Lord, fantastic. You've got the Hungry Earth and Cold Blood, a Silurian two-parter. Again, I think it really brings the Silurians into the 21st century, as New Who has done for a lot of monsters, so big points for that. You have Vincent and the Doctor, which is a phenomenal episode. Um, I do need to re-watch it again, but I remember the last time I watched it, I still loved it as I did then. Really cool. You've got The Lodger, which was originally based on a David Tennant comic strip. James Corden's in this. And I always usually say James Corden is only good in Gavin and Stacey and not much else, but I'll give him some credit. He's not awful in this. He's not as bad as he could be. And then you've got the finale, the Pandorica opens, and the big bang. Um, I never really found this finale too spectacular on broadcast. Having said that, in the Russell T Davies era, finales were all about, you know, hugeness and bombast, whereas Moffat didn't always necessarily favour that, and I respect that. But yeah, this finale on the whole just wasn't for me. But again, like a lot of this season, I do need to give it 
a rewatch. Okay, moving on to bonus features. So you have some Meanwhile in the TARDIS, additional scenes has begun the era of adding little scenes here and there. You've got four of the monster files, you've got a, a video diary, you've got confidential cutdowns, Doctor of Confidential was still going strong then. You have commentaries for a few of the episodes as well. You've got outtakes and over, over 20 teasers and trailers. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of teasers and trailers. I must admit, I think a lot of these, to my knowledge, were present on the original Series 5 release, both on DVD and Blu-ray before. And it's a bit of a shame that there isn't a more, like, you know, on the Classic Who DVDs, like, more expansive featurettes. I know they've got d confidential cutdowns, which are going to be 15-minute makings of, but I would have loved something a bit more expansive, especially as they were re-releasing this on Steelbook. It would have been nice to have, you know, just some extra features in general. Taking it out of its sleeve, you have a little slip, which I think, like all the others, details what's on what disc, very useful. And you've got a promo for The Edge of Time, which at this point when this set came out was only available on VR services, although I do believe they are redoing it for uh, consoles as well. And you've got a promo for At Childhood's End, a Doctor Who novel where, written by Sophie Aldred, who plays Ace, and she meets the 13th Doctor, which I do need to check out. That would be really, really cool. As for the set itself, there's a look at it without the slipcover. Again, looking at Sophie Cowdery's gorgeous artwork here on the front and the back. That is beautiful. I really, really like that. In terms of the actual discs, I believe the, these designs were used in previous Blu-ray releases. Thankfully, they are not stacked. They are on these like flipbook design things, which I prefer much, much better. But yeah, I mean, uh, again, a lot of the reason people like these steelbooks is this gorgeous artwork. And let's just look at that. Look at that. So that is the contents of the season, or Series 5 Steelbook, I should say. In terms of where you can get it, it is still available new in some retailers like HMV, although that's becoming less and less. It did come out, I think, in February of 2020. These things are limited, and they will stop being sold as new. So if you want one, I'd advise checking your local uh, media retailer. You might still be able to get it on places like Amazon and Zoom for the retail price, but if you don't bag it now, it is going to start going up and up and up. Right, now we're moving on to Series 6. Ah, yes, everyone's favourite. A very divisive season. But first of all, the cover. Again, this has been done by Sophie Cowdery, and she's done a phenomenal job. I love the fact that green is the main hue here, both, again, of the Sonic, but also the background. It's actually probably the best Series 6 art I've, I've seen in general. I love the fact you've got the regulars, so Matt Smith, Karen Gillan, Arthur Darville, and Alex Kingston. And you've got the TARDIS in the background. You've got the little scribblings, you know, there marking the silence as well. I actually like that they haven't gone with a villain on the front. You've still got the main TARDIS team. It's just a really awesome design. And Sophie's done another phenomenal job. First of these to have the new ratings logo on as well. Twizzling it round. Oh, look at that. Let's take a look at this artwork, shall we? Once again, beautiful use of artwork from the season. You've got members of the silence. You've got Madame Kavarian. I think that was the name. You've got the astronaut with the reflection being of the Doctor regenerating. And you've got... Idris, or or the TARDIS, or the Doctor's Wife, if you like. Many, many possibilities, but yeah, love that. And I love on this one, it says, starring Matt Smith, Karen Gillan, Arthur Darvill, and Alex Kingston, recognising that all three of them are somewhat regulars in this, so all, all you people in Jodie's era, oh, there's three companions. You could argue there was technically three on-off companions in this series. This was all first broadcast in 2011, bar the first thing on here, which is A Christmas Carol, the 2010 Christmas special. It's a, uh, yeah, it's lovely. It's probably the most Christmassy or makes me feel the most Christmassy out of them. I don't always look for uh, Christmas specials to necessarily be about Christmas, but I thought this one uh, took the Dickens uh, concept and worked around it really well with Doctor Who. Then with series six itself, you've got the Impossible Astronaut, Day of the Moon, which I actually appreciate more uh, the more I watch it and as I get older. Curse of the Black Spot, it's often seen as one of the weaker parts of the season. I'm inclined to agree. Doctor Who does pirates sort of well, sort of not. You've got The Doctor's Wife, which was written by Neil Gaiman and is actually one of the best episodes of the Matt Smith era. The idea of the TARDIS becoming a, a, a sentient, well, she is sentient, but like a humanish form is really, really cool. Saran Jones is amazing. One of the best episodes there. You've got The Rebel Flesh and Almost People, which I'm going to say this, and I know a lot of people might come after me for it. I honestly thought is one of the dullest two-parters in New Who history, both on broadcast and on rewatch. It's just, yeah, it doesn't engage me that much, to be honest. Then you've got A Good Man Goes to War, which was the part one of this series finale. They split it in two, which I still think was a bad decision. It's a bit of a jumbled mess. It does set some things up, has some big reveals, but ultimately, is it good uh, in parts, I think? Uh, Let's Kill Hitler, again, interesting idea, maybe not best in concept. 
Night Terrors is a really cool horror-esque episode. I really enjoyed that one, actually. You've got The Girl Who Waited, one of the best episodes of this series. Karen Gillan does an amazing performance throughout. You've got The God Complex, which has, again, great ideas, but for me just wasn't executed in necessarily a good way. So, yeah, sorry, Series 6 fans. You've got Closing Time, where they brought James Corden back. It just feels like they're trying to do The Lodger Part 2, but without the lodging, and it just feels a bit cheap and a bit rushed and a bit bleh, and the Cybermen are absolutely wasted. And you've got The Wedding of River Song, which attempts to tie everything up. It does that to a degree, but I just remember a lot of people found it very confusing. You know, like Joe Bloggs just tuning in, like my parents, for example. I found it a bit confusing at first uh, as a fan. It's not that bad as everyone makes it out to be, but yeah, just on the whole, this season has a few gems, but in my opinion, quite a few misfires. In terms of bonus features, you've got five Knight and the Doctor additional scenes, which I actually quite like those. You've got comic relief sketches, you've got audio commentaries, you've got monster files, prequels, trailers, you've got uh, all the confidential cutdowns, so 15 minute versions of them, and you've got a, a confidential cutdown for a Knight's Tale as well. So again, features that were present on uh, past releases, which on one hand is, you know, to be expected. Um, I don't, I'm not seeing anything that's necessarily new, which again is a bit of a shame. I would have liked a bit more of an expansive, or even if they made a new documentary of some sort for this set. But I, I guess, you know, maybe they're on a budget, they're re-releasing these, mainly for the steelbook and nice quality. So the only thing that comes with this one, no promos for the media, is just a little slip detailing what is on the set. Which is fine, you know, I'm, I'm all for not having adverts in my steelbooks all the time. Just looking at this before we open it, another example of Sophie's gorgeous artwork there. I'd love a frame of that. That'd be phenomenal. And look at that on the back. Oh, man. Some people, you know, just display these for the art, and I can see why, because it's gorgeous. Opening the thing up, you have the discs here, and you might be thinking, why is there only two? Well, unfortunately, there isn't. These discs are stacked. And you didn't see it on camera, but when I first opened this, the Christmas Carol disc just fell out, because... The thing with stacked discs is they do fit, but they can come off way too easily and they're a bit flimsy. So I'm a bit gutted they cheaped out on that front, but you know, all the discs are here. So that is the Series 6 Steelbook in a nutshell. Again, not my favourite season, not a lot of people's favourite seasons. Uh, a bit of a case of, I think, too many ideas. The whole season split, leaving a few months gap was not a good idea in my view. There are some gems, Doctor's Wife, Girl Who Waited, but ultimately this is not a series I go back to often. It's just not for me, and it further pushed me further away from the whole sort of Matt Smith era. Okay, so here is the pesky newcomer, Doctor Who, the complete seventh series. Now, as I said at the beginning, this literally arrived today as you're seeing this, so apologies for any lighting changes or audio changes. It's been a pretty hectic day trying to cobble this video together. But yes, this came out today, and it is the seventh series of New Who. And again, some gorgeous artwork from Sophie Cowdery, who I mentioned earlier. Please do check out her stuff. This is absolutely incredible. What I love is the front half is the first part of Series 7, because like Series 6, they split it in two. And the back half is summarizing Series 7B. It's more detailed on the inside as well. But on the front, you've got the Doctor Amy and Rory, the Doctor still rocking his tweed. You've got Weeping Angels of Plenty and a Dalek in chains and a dinosaur because that episode happened. Oh, and the cubes are at the bottom, lest I forget. It's five discs this release and I'm going to spin it round and we're going to take a look just what is on here. So as you can see, some of the Series 7B artwork on the back. You've got Matt Smith, Jenna Coleman, you've got the Whisperman, you've got a Cyberman as well, and you've got uh, the Great Intelligence and a Nice Warrior. Nice little mix there. This was, of course, the 50th anniversary season, or the second half was of it anyway. So to go through the episodes, we have The Doctor, The Widow and The Wardrobe, the 2011 Christmas special. A lot of people don't like this one. I think it's got a lot of heart. It's certainly one of the least memorable of the New Who Christmas specials, but very enjoyable nonetheless. You have then Series 7 starting. You have Asylum of the Daleks, where Jenna Coleman actually makes an early debut. I always quite liked it, although I wish they pushed the concept further with showing every Dalek and just focusing more on the Daleks, really. Dinosaurs on a spaceship is just a fun romp. You know, it's obviously taking the mick out of snakes on a plane. A lot of fun. Mark Williams' as Rory's dad is fantastic. Um, not a bad Chibnall script, in my opinion. A Town Called Mercy, Doctor Who does a Western, but guess what? It's not the Gunfighters. Um, I think it's better than the Gunfighters. Not that that one's bad. And there's some really good character moments for Matt Smith's Doctor as well. And you have a cool villain too in The Gunslinger. Then you have The Power of Three, The Cubes. I did like the concept of this one. The cube concept I thought was really cool. 
The ending is horrifically rushed, and I know I'm not going to lay into that more because it's been beaten to death at this point, but yeah, not the strongest story. Then you have the Angels Take Manhattan, which sees Amy and Rory leave for good. Um, it has Weeping Angels, it has River Song. It's basically like a culmination of all this character work we've been doing with River Song, the Ponds, and the Angels. It's like a... It could have ended like Matt Smith's Doctor there if he decided to go, but he's going to stay on. But it's a very definitive end of like the first chunk of the Matt Smith era, in my opinion. Then you have the Snowmen, the, the Christmas special for 2012, where Jenna Coleman appears once again as a different version of Clara. I'd argue this one is more forgettable for me than uh, The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't really click with me. So not much more to say on that one. The Bells of St. John kicked off 7 Series B, as it's known, the second half of it. And it has Clara now as the Clara we know. The Impossible Girl thing kicks off. Not a strong start, in my opinion, but it's not terrible. Then you have the Rings of Akaten, which really split fandom. There are corners of fandom that really love this, and there are corners of fandom that really hate it. In fact, in the last Doctor Who magazine poll of all the stories available at the time, it actually placed in the bottom 10. It's not bottom 10 in my opinion, but it does have a few flaws. I do love the song, though. That concept's really cool. Cold War, featuring the new Who return of the Ice Warriors. Really cool story to reintroduce them. I love the concept of them coming out of the armor as well, which is sort of what they're doing with the Daleks now. But yeah, really cool story. You have Hyde which is sort of like a ghost story thing, and, you know, it's it's okay. Again, I, I didn't really find it that memorable, aside from a few lines here and there, and everyone saying, oh, Matt Smith said Metabilis wrong, you know, it's just, let's get over that, guys. Journey into the center of the TARDIS, again, this sort of movie poster title thing. Really cool concept. I wish it had been a two-part, though. If it had been two parts, I feel they could have really delved into that whole... Um, inside the TARDIS sort of thing, but they didn't, so that's a bit of a shame. You have the Crimson Horror, which was actually at the time when this broadcast was probably my favourite episode from the season. A lot of cool character moments, uh, the Paternoster gang are great, you've got Diana Rigg as a great villain. Yeah, it was just my favourite, to be honest. Nightmare in Silver was alright, but again, this whole thing of making the Cybermen practically invincible, always upgrading, just made them a bit too powerful, there's less focus again on like the body horror of the Cybermen. Just not a good story for them. The Matt Smith here, I'd argue, wasn't kind to the Cybermen. And then you finish with the name of the Doctor, which, of course, cliffhangered into the 50th anniversary special. And the name of the Doctor is now going to have a unique distinction because it's both on this set and we know it's going to be on the 50th anniversary set too. So that's an interesting precedent there appearing twice. Of course, we must talk about the bonus features and we have some prequels. We've got behind the scenes, we've got commentaries, additional scenes, documentaries, exclusive content, a script to screen for The Good as Gold, which was a short, I believe, The Making of the Gunslinger, Pond Life, which was like a little mini sewed series thing, and Comic-Con. So yeah, nice features here. Again, to my knowledge, all of these have previously been available on Series 7 DVD and Blu-ray releases. I don't think we've got a new, like a brand spanking new documentary or anything like that, which is fine because that's not what these are really made for. But I just thought with the passage of time, even if they'd added one, you know, extra documentary or feature, I thought that could have been pretty cool. So with this steelbook, as always, you have the little uh, slip saying, you know, what this season is and what is on each disc, always useful. And this time we have an advert for Time Fracture, which is a theatre experience that will hopefully go ahead if this pandemic ever eases up. And on the back, oh, look at that, a handy dandy guide to Time Lord Victorious, the saga that's currently going on, which is admittedly quite useful. And when you open it up, you do have a little advertisement. So on the left, you've got calendars, a diary and greetings cards, which is always nice. And then you've got an advert for some Doctor Who games. You've got The Edge of Time, you've got The Edge of Reality, which I believe is the console version of The Edge of Time, and The Lonely Assassins, which is also coming soon. So really cool that Doctor Who's making a splash in the video game scene. Before we open it up, just another look at Sophie's gorgeous artwork there, really representing Season 7A. And then on the back, there you go, a closer look at that Series 7B artwork where you've got the Doctor in his new purple coat, you've got Clara, the Whisper Men and all that sort of stuff, and the TARDIS at the back there from Trenzalore. I really do adore this artwork, you know. Opening this up, sadly, the discs are stacked. I hate this stacked format. I wish they were still the flip thing. I guess they do it to save costs and save on plastic, which, you know, it's understandable. But again, you didn't see it on camera. I opened this up and one of these discs fell straight out, so they're not the most reliable way of storing media. But hey, we've still got these discs here, and I believe these discs' designs have been used before, so nothing new there. 
Overall, Series 7 for me is the mixed bag it was for many people, both when it broadcast and now. There are some really strong episodes in there, like for me it's the Crimson Horror being a shining example. But I think with the pressure of the 50th anniversary looming, even Stephen Moffat submitted this was the period in his showrunner tenure when he was really tired and worn out. And I'm not saying that's his fault for the decline in, in quality, but I remember a lot of people at the time saying they didn't enjoy it as much as, say, Series 5 or even Series 6 to some comparison. But there are some strong stories here, and I'm glad, like all the others before it, it has now a Steelbook release. And finally, we're going to be looking at this, Doctor Who The Complete 10th series, Capaldi's final series as the 12th Doctor. And yes, for those who are eagle-eyed, there is a Series 9 Steelbook that is available. It was released shortly after Series 9 aired in 2015. Unfortunately, it was very limited edition and now is very expensive. You literally have to pay hundreds of pounds to acquire it, and I do not have that kind of money, and I'm not willing to spend that kind of money on a steelbook, so I did pass on that, but this one is more readily available. Taking the 2017 series, again, we've got some stunning artwork here. I love this portrait of Capaldi with all the, the mix of like the reds and greens and pinks. It just looks great. You can tell it was released before the new rebranding as it's got the Capaldi logo. This was released sort of late 2017, early 2018. So let's spin it around and see what is on here. Oh, you've got some nice artwork of Bill on the back there, who of course is the companion. So starring Peter Capaldi and Pearl Mackey. So they actually kicks off with the 2016 Christmas special, which is the return of Doctor Mysterio, which a lot of people lambasted when it came out. You know, Doctor Who does superheroes. It's trying to be the MCU. It's a bit cringe. It's not cringe. I find it very heartwarming. It's a very fun story. It's very rewatchable, especially around Christmas time. So I liked it. I really liked it. And then you've got the pilot, which of course is a double metaphor for a character in the story, but also they were trying this whole thing of, oh, we're relaunching Doctor Who for a new audience. And yeah, it's very accessible. Arguably, maybe a bit plain, but very accessible. Smile with the emoji robots. Um, yeah, interesting concept. Nothing amazingly stand out, but I liked it. Thin Ice, which is a really strong episode, taking us back to the uh, early 19th century in London. There's some great talking points about race there that I think Doctor Who does so well. You've got Knock Knock, an attempt at like a horror story and like a haunted house sort of thing. Some really cool scenes, some really cool moments. You have Oxygen, which is a contender for me as the best episode of this series. Really cool concepts, really cool ideas. The the thing of the Doctor becoming blind. Really interesting dynamic, and Capaldi just absolutely sells it. Then you've got a little trilogy. You've got Extremis, The Pyramid at the End of the World, and The Lie of the Land. Uh, my favourite was the middle segment. It's not the best trilogy in conception. I mean, a lot of people after Lie of the Land felt a bit burned or a bit cheated by a lot of things that were revealed. It's not awful, but I think it could have been helmed in a bit of a better way. You've got Empress of Mars, a return with, to, for the Ice Warriors. Uh, yeah, I liked it. Ice Warriors on Mars. I mean, it's the home planet. Of course we're going to see that at some point. The Eaters of Light, which interestingly was done by Rona Munro, who wrote Survival, the last story of the classic series. I think Survival's better. I do need to re-watch Eaters of Light, though, but I remember it being sort of a come-and-go episode. And then you're leading into the finale with World Enough and Time and The Doctor Falls 2 amazing episodes. Two of the best of the Capaldi era, two of the best of the Modern Who era in my view. Absolutely brilliantly directed by Rachel Talalay. Like all her finales really. Really interesting concepts. You've got Missy and the Master. You've got Cybermen. You've got the Tragedy of Bill. It's honestly two of the best episodes in the show's history and I implore you to go and watch them if you haven't seen it. Special features. Oh, it looks like we've got a bit more than the others although that could be you know, misleading. So you've got a Doctor Who Extra for the return of Doctor uh, return of Doctor Mysterio. Doctor Who Extra is basically confidential, but now 10 minutes instead of 15. You've got the Doctor, a new kind of hero. You've got Knock Knock, the binaural sound. Yeah, they tried this whole basically binaural sound. If you listen with, like, headphones, you get a better soundscape. But it was a really cool idea, actually. you got Becoming the Companion, Out of This World, Who's There, Rona Munro, a modern classic. The Finale Falls, <laughs> nice. Inside looks, deleted scenes, audio commentaries, Doctor Who, the fan show, which was like a little thing hosted by uh, Christelle D. Brilliant thing there. After shows and Doctor Who, the finale. Countdown. Okay, so it seems like there's a bit more than of the Matt Smith ones we've looked at. Again, like this came out uh, toe in toe with the DVD and Blu-ray standard releases. So it's not a case of reusing special features. These were just the special features they, they had. Uh, again, you would have liked maybe... An exclusive special feature for the Steelbook variant, although I'm not too bothered that there isn't, considering it was released day and day. But um, yeah, those are your specials. Taking it out of its slipcase, you've got um, some art cards. I love some art cards. 
Here's this gorgeous one of Pcap himself, and when you, it might be a bit fuzzy, but there he is with his Sonic, and when you shim it, he's like his eyes close like a regeneration thing, really cool. That one, you've got one of, uh, well, John Sim morphing into, if it does it, into Michelle Gomez, that's really cool. And uh, the most tragic one, because you've got Bill, lovely Bill, who then turns into a Cyberman, and if you've seen the finale, you'll know what that's about. So yeah, really gorgeous art cards. I believe they released those with DVD and Blu-ray as well, so it's not a Steelbook exclusive. And then you've also got uh, 2018 Calendars and Diaries. So this did sort of come out, you know, end of 2017 for all your favourite BBC shows, and there's nothing on the back. So nice little advertisement. And there is the steel without the slip looking... Capaldi is just a gorgeous human being, isn't he? I've got a secret man crush on Capaldi, even though he's a good, you know, 35 years older than me, somewhat. But yeah, gorgeous artwork on the front, and on the back, you have that lovely artwork of Bill. A uh, full face this time, which is great. Bill was such a great companion, even though she was in one season, exactly like Martha for me. I loved her for one season. I would have killed to see more, and I'm still waiting for Free Imagineman to do some big finish, and I would love it if Capaldi ever comes to big finish, if he does some stuff with Bill, too. And that, in a nutshell, is the Series 10 Steelbook. It's not my favourite Capaldi season. That would still be Series 8, his first one, which is still waiting a Steelbook release, although I'm guessing we're going to get one in 2021. But it is an, it's still a cracking series. So many good stories. Pearl Mackey is excellent as Bill. Capaldi friggin' soars as the 12th Doctor, man. He did that in his first series, in my opinion, but he just soars. He continues to do well. So I'm really happy we have a Steelbook, of course. Now, the question is, it doesn't include his final episode, which is Twice Upon a Time. And after that, you've got Jodie's Era, which is already on a Steelbook. So I'm wondering if they're going to do a re-release of the Series 10 Steel with Twice Upon a Time. If they do, great, although I'll probably have to buy it again. But still, I, I would love it if they did that. And that, in a nutshell, is the Steve Moffat Era of Steelbooks that I currently own. In terms of where you can get these... Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, so Series 7 literally came out today, the day I'm recording this today, you're hopefully seeing it, the 14th of December, so you can get that for its normal retail price of about $27.99. Series 6 is still available in a lot of retailers, I went into a HMB recently, they still had it new there, again, about £27.99. Series 5 is becoming less and less available new, these are all limited edition after all, so if you're lucky and you see it in the shops, get it now, because you can still get it for its base price, but if you miss out, then it is going to start increasing so i get it now if you find it series 10 i got off amazon and it was about 40 pounds so a little bit over the base price but can you know i think you can still get it for that price it's one of the easier new who steel books to actually find so if you're a capaldi fan if you want to get series 10 that's quite easy to get as well as i mentioned in the series 10 like look at the series 9 steel book is very difficult to come by because it's quite rare and expensive as of this video, a Series 8 Blu-ray Steelbook has not been announced, although everyone's thinking it will come in 2021 because they've been pretty consistent so far. Obviously, we have a 50th Anniversary Steelbook to look forward to as well. That has been announced. No release date on that just yet, but obviously that will come before a Series 8 Steelbook. So I will be picking all of those up, and rest assured when I do pick them up, I'll be making update videos or unboxing videos looking at those steelbooks as well. But that is it for this part. Join me next time where we're going to take a look at the two steelbooks that make up the Jodie Whittaker or Chris Chibnall era of Doctor Who so far. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're brand new. Remember to check out the first part if you haven't seen it. And let me know down in the comments, have you got any of these steelbooks? Are you planning on getting them? I've been Adam Martin from AMTV and until the next one, I shall see you next time. A massive thank you to our producer and director patrons for your support towards us here at AMTV. You just help keep us going, and that's massively appreciated. And that does bring us to the end of another evening here on AMTV. We hope you enjoyed the program, and we hope to see you next time. Good night.